good afternoon ev so good afternoon everyone um the topic that was assigned to us is about the international and global marketing um and i am be i will be presenting the introduction to international and global marketing so what is global marketing Global marketing is the practice of conducting marketing activities from a company's central location while distributing and selling items or services across many, across many countries worldwide. Um, global marketing also means marketing the company's products and services, considering the global market as one. It also adopts a uniform marketing approach to all its locations. Um, the product design and variety are also kept the same. A classic example of a company that, that is adopting a global marketing is Apple. Apple company targets an international audience but maintains uniformity in its products, product designs and features. So pa, so di ba kung anong kung anong Apple products yung ginagamit sa America, ganun din naman yung mga nabibili natin dito sa Pilipinas. Um another example is the Coca-Cola. Um the basic ingredients and process and the process used in making Coca-Cola in the in different in different countries are are the same, although people perceive taste in very different ways. While international marketing is defined as the process of expanding into other markets by creating subsidiaries in various countries with the aim of implementing appropriate techniques. So, kung yung global marketing tinitreat niya yung global market as one, um this. Field of marketing naman focuses on understanding the unique characteristics, preferences, behaviors, and needs of consumers in diverse countries or regions. It also ad involves adopting marketing strategies, product offerings, pricing, distribution channels, and promotional tactics to suit the specific cultural, econo economic, social, and legal aspects of various international markets. An example of company that uses international marketing is Starbucks. Starbucks is an international company that allows its franchises and partners to adapt the menus and store designs to local environments. Another example is Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts also implemented an international marketing, marketing strategy that involves tailoring its product offerings to align with the preferences and tastes of consumers in various target regions throughout the globe. Katulad sa South Korea, yung Dunkin' Donuts na offer sila ng grapefruit kulata donuts. While naman sa China, nag-offer sila ng seaweed donuts since nga, yun yung mga product na parang yun yung product na mas madalas kinakain nung doon sa, sa mga country na yun. Um, Global marketing and international marketing are both strategies used by the companies to expand, expand their operations beyond their domestic border, borders. While they share similarities, they also have distinct differences. First one is their difference in, in, in terms of scope and strategy. Um, global marketing treats the entire world as a single market. It focuses on standardization and uniformity in marketing strategies product offerings, and brand image across different companies, uh, across different countries. Companies strive for a consistent global brand identity and aim to deliver standardized products or services to all markets. Um, global marketing uh, strategy aims to for uniformity in ma marketing campaigns, product offerings, and brand images across different countries. While the international marketing treats each country or market as a separate entity, it emphasizes it emphasizes adopting marketing strate strategies, products, and promotional activities to suit the unique characteristics, cultures, and preferences of individual markets. It focuses on marketing activities carried out in multiple countries but treat each country as a separate entity with localized marketing strategies. Um, the next one is their approach to markets. Um, in global marketing, the focus it, it it focus on standardizing the products and marketing strategies across different markets. Um, it the emphasis is consistency and uniformity in brand in branding, product offerings, and promotional activities. While in international marketing, 
it adopts products and marketing strategies to fit the preferences, cultures, and demands of different local markets. This involves tailoring products, promotional efforts, and distribution methods to suit the specific, specific needs of the regions or countries. The next one is the product customization. Products in global marketing tend to be uniform with minimal customization for different markets. Similarly, marketing campaigns, branding elements, and, pro and promotional strategies often remain consistent across various countries or regions. Um, katulad nga ng example ko kanina, yung Coca-Cola and yung Apple, yung sa product nila is pare same lang across different countries. And yung mga promotion, kung paano nila i-promote yung, yung mga product nila is the same lang then across the countries. The next, the next one is the um, product customization on international marketing. International marketing allows for greater product customization and adaptation. Product, products marketing, ma marketing messages and promotional efforts are adjusted to suit the cultural nuances, preference, and regulations of different countries. Sa international marketing naman, kung, kung ano yung preferred na mga products or yung preferred na mga bagay na kailangan in different countries, yun naman yung, yung focus nila. The, the next is on decision making. Um, decision making in global marketing is more centralized, often led by the global headquarters. Strategic decisions related to branding, product designs, and marketing campaigns are made centrally and applied universally universally ac across the all markets. Um, while in international marketing, is decision making tends to be decentralized. Companies often delegate more autonomy to local subsidiaries or country managers to adapt strategies strategies according to the unique demands of individual markets. Um, so in terms of decision making naman, since ngayong global marketing, they treat the the market as one, the global market as one, syempre, isa lang din yung panggagalingan ng pinaka-decision making since nga pare-parehas naman yung mga, yung yung branding nila, yung marketing nila. Well, dun sa international marketing, um, may sariling, may sariling decision yung bawat, yung bawat, bawat market yung bawat local subsidiaries or country managers since nga sila yung mas nakakaalam kung ano nga ba yung dapat yung mga kailangan yung mga kailangan gawin dun sa market nila and last is the risk and investment um while global marketing offers the advantage of economies of scale it also involves higher initial investments due to the need for the standardized products and marketing strategies but however if successful this approach can lead to substantial cost savings in long term uh well in international marketing um well the risk of market specific failures might be higher due to the need of for adaptation in international marketing, the in initial investment may be lower compared to global marketing. However, this approach requires more resources for customization and adaptation to different markets. Um, in, in, in global marketing, nag involve siya ng higher risk due to the uniform approach, but it can lead to economies and scales and mas mababa yung production cost. Mas mataas nga lang yung, uh, yung initial investment para kam para makapag-establish into global presence. While in international marketing, uh, mas mababa yung risk and investment kasi nga parang ina-adapt mo kung ano ba yung 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 preference nung country na pag pag aanuhan mo nung business. However, this approach might require more resources for customization. Both uh, both strategies have their own merits and demerits and companies often choose to approach the alliance na nagbe-best sa product and goals nila. Um, ay pero ano nga ba ang advantages ng global marketing? The first one is growth and expansion opportunities. Global marketing offers businesses the, the chances to, ac to access the new market worldwide, expanding their customer base beyond local boundaries. It also allows them to increase sales, revenue, and brand presence by diversifying their reach. Company reduce re really reliance on one market and can better navigate economic changes in different regions. Overall, yung global marketing enable businesses to grow, explore new opportunities, and enhance their success on a global level. The next one is econo economies of scale. 
Um, when we say economies of scale, it refers to the cost advantages that a, a business can achieve by increasing its scale of production. So, pag tumaas nga yung production level natin, ang tendency, nag, nag, uh, ano, nag-decrease yung average cost per unit. So, operating in various markets may lead nga to economies of scale through increased production, reduced per unit cost, and improved efficiency in distribution and logistics. The next one is the higher profit, higher profit margin. Parang when the company adopts global marketing, it tends to increase the profitability that companies can achieve by expanding their business operations across international markets. It, uh, it involves in generating more revenue while effectively managing costs, re resulting in a greater pre percentage of profit from sales. The next one is global brand recognition. Successful global marketing efforts can el elevate brand recognition and reputation by demonstra demonstrating an ability to adapt to various cultures and meet the needs of the di diverse customers' segments. The next one is a uh, competitive edge. Um, it is a company's unique advantage or superior position over competitors when operating in international markets. It involves having distinct qualities, strategies, or capabilities that set a, sets a business apart and, and enable it to outperform others in global marketplace. This edge allows a company to attract customers, generate higher revenues, and achieve sustainable growth. The next one is uniformity in marketing practices. The strategic approach of maintaining consistent elements within a company's marketing mix, such as product, price, place, and promotion across various countries or regions. Um, this approach aims to create a cohesive brand image, streamline operations, and achieve economies of scale by minimizing variations in the marketing strategies or product offerings. So while there are advantages in adopting global marketing, there are, there, there are also disadvantages. The first one, is lack of sales and marketing channel adaptation. It is the failure of inadequacy of adjusting or customizing sales and marketing strategies, methods, and channels to suit the diverse and dynamic natural nature of global market. Since nga, parang uh, iisa lang yung product nila across the, uh, across the world, uh, minsan yung ibang mga countries, hindi naman porkit okay sa country na ito, magiging okay na rin siya sa ibang country. Um, in a globalized business landscape, companies operate various countries' cultures in each with its own unique preferences, consumer behaviors, and marketing conditions. Successful global marketing requires a keen understanding of these differences and, ab and the ability to tailor sales and marketing approach accordingly. The next one is verifying consumer demand. In global marketing, in, in global marketing involves understanding what people in different countries want and need. This, be, this can be tough because each place has its own unique, unique way. Um, figure, uh, figuring this out needs a lot of study, money, and really understanding the small but important details in each place. What's popular in one country might not be like in, other, in another place in another because people have different tastes and habits. So when a company tries to sell globally, it, may, it might find it hard to know exactly what each market wants. Parang this can lead to problems like products not selling well or spending money on marketing that doesn't work everywhere. Adjusting to all these different demands around the world can be a big challenge and downside of doing, glo doing business globally. The next one is the language barriers. Um, Siyempre nga, if you're going to market globally, iba-iba naman yung language natin. Um, so the language differences can create communication challenges. Translating marketing materials accurately, accurately while conveying the intended message and tone can be difficult and may lead to mis misunderstanding or misinterpretations. The next one is reliance over research and external information. Um, it refers to the critical dependence on thorough investigation, analysis, and utilization of data and insight from various external sources to inform and shape marketing strategies and decision on a global scale. The next one is the government restrictions. 
um, yung government restrictions in global marketing like tariffs, laws, and varying regulations across countries. Um, uh, ginagawa niyang mahirap yung com- mahira para sa company na mag-enter into new markets. Kasi parang pinapataas niya yung cost and yung yung mga yung company nag-face sila ng challenges na iba't ibang kasi 'di ba sa iba't ibang uh, iba't ibang countries yung pag aanuhan mo ng mga products mo iba't iba rin yung mga yung mga rules and regulations na kailangan mong sundin. Pero nga hindi mo na, hindi ka naman makakapag-offer sa sa country na yon ng ng product kung hindi mo naman sila susundin. So so um itong mga government restrictions na to hinihinder niya yung market access market access ng companies para makapag-operate into that into that into that country tinat tumataas din yung mga operational expenses kasi di ba um sa pag-register kailangan mong magbayad ng mga ng mga ta- ng taxes and tariffs um kaya nahihirapan yung mga companies to to do global business effectively The next one is chances of non-acceptance of products or services. Um, ito naman yung, katulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, hindi naman lahat ng, na hindi, hindi forget okay dito sa country na to, okay din dun sa kabilang kan, sa country. So parang ito yung chance, yung probability na yung product or services na you offer may not be embraced or adopted by the target audience or market in different countries or regions worldwide. The next one is the non-specification of target markets. Um, not specifying target markets in global marketing is like trying to sell something to everyone without focusing on who might actually want or need it. Imagine having a product that could be useful for different age, age groups, interests, or locations, but not pinpointing exactly who would benefit the most from it. Parang this lack of focus can be a significant disadvantage in global marketing because it leads to inefficiency Without a specific target audience in mind, a company might spend a lot of resources, like time and money, trying to reach everyone, but end up not effectively connecting with people who are most likely to buy their product. Um, understanding and specifying target markets in crucial glo- global marketing to tailor messages, products, and strategies that resonate with particular groups, ensuring the efforts are concentrated where they are most likely to yield results in making the best use of resources. The next one is the limited knowledge of global global logistics. Uh, managing logistics across international borders involves dealing with diverse transportation systems, customs regulations, and infra- infrastructure differences. So having a limited knowledge of global lo- logistics hinders a company's e- efficient movement of products worldwide. This lack of expertise leads to increased cost, del- increased cost, delays in delivery, trouble, trouble with international regulations and potential error, errors. In turn, this affects timely and cost-effective product delivery, impacting competitiveness in global market. In global market, so managing global logistics well is a crucial for international expansion. Direct and, and it also directly influencing a company's ability to reach customers and compete effective effectively worldwide so here naman are some advantages of international marketing like sa ano sa global marketing it's the uh, one of advantages of international marketing is expansion of business um it, it refers to the process by which company seeks to grow its operation and market market presence beyond its domestic borders to reach customers in multiple countries or regions around the world um this expansion is aimed at tapping into new markets diversifying the customer base and leveraging opportunities for growth and profitability on a global scale next one is it builds endurance um ito naman yung capacity and capability ng business or marketing entity to sustain its efforts, operations, and effectiveness over time in the realm of global markets despite facing various challenges, complexities, and uncertainties inherent in international business. The next one is customer engagement. Um, it means that the company's capacity to thrive in, the, in diverse global markets over time. This advantage helps them navigate economic changes, 
shifting consumer consumer preferences and competition across multiple regions. By establishing a strong presence internationally, business become more resilient to market-specific challenges, reduce dependence on any single market, and create more growth opportunities. Um, next one is diversification. It is a strategy of expanding a company's operation into different countries and markets. This approach offers several advantages. First, it allows companies to spread their risk across various markets. If there's an economic downturn, downturn or unfavorable conditions in one country, the company may still thrive in other regions where conditions are more favorable. Um, diversification in international marketing offers a safety net against market-specific risks and open doors to new growth opportunities by, tap by tapping into different regions and demographics, ultimately contributing to a company's long-term success and sustainability. Next is the customer orientation. It refers to a strategic approach where company prioritize understanding and, and meeting the needs, preferences, and expectations of customers in different countries and cultures. It also emphasizes placing the customer at the center of all marketing efforts, tailoring products, services, and marketing strateg strategies to suit the specific requirements of diverse international market. This approach is considered advantageous because it allows business to tailor their products or services to meet the specific demands of the inverse markets. And last one is the sales promotion. It refers to the various marketing activities and techniques designed to stimulate immediate sales or encourage the purchase of products or services in international or global markets. These promotions are typically used for a limited period to, to prompt quick and measurable customer actions. The next one is the disadvantages of international marketing. Same with global marketing, uh, one of the disadvantages of international marketing is also government restrictions. The next one is competition, competition with local companies. Um, ito naman yung rivalry and competitive challenges faced by in global or multinational companies when entering foreign markets and competing against indigenous, indigenous or locally established business operating within those markets. Siyempre, yung mga local companies, mas alam nila mas alam nila kung ano ba yung preferred dalaga na, mga, na gusto nung, nung market nila since nga mga taga, taga means since nga local sila doon. Um, so when global companies expands into these international markets, they encounter competition from this entrench local businesses. And last one is high cost. Um, it refers to the increased expenses and investments incurred, incurred by businesses when expanding their marketing activities across international borders or targeting multiple markets outside their domestic region. This elevated costs arise due to various factors associated with operating on a global scale. Um, so that's all. That's all for my report. Thank you. May we may proceed to the next presenter. Go ahead. Visible na screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Melo and my fellow learners. I am Lina Silonaria, and I am here to discuss global market entry strategies and cross-cultural marketing challenges and adaptations. Since we are now given with relevant information regarding the global market, let us now discuss further various strategies on navigating the said subject. So at the end of our discussion, we aim to identify various entry modes in the global market, ma-identify din po yung mga advantages and disadvantages nila, understand the marketing challenges in the global market, as well as identify strategies to adapt on the global market's challenges. 
global businesses are continuously looking for new methods to expand their markets. The leaders must carefully analyze their motives and goals bago pa man sila mag-umpisa sa international expansion. With this, market entry is not a one-size-fits-all undertaking. Rather, it necessitates tailored strategy. So, depending siyempre sa mga variables such as yung industry, target market, and available res- and available resources. In relation to this, throughout the years, various strategies are devised when entering the global market. So, discuss natin siya one Finally. by one along with their advantages and disadvantages. First, let's start with exporting. Exporting is a market entry strategy in which a company sells its goods or services to customers in other countries. It usually entails shipping goods or providing services over international borders, frequently with the help of intermediaries or distributors. So it can be of two types. First is direct exporting, or when the export activity is directly carried out by the manufacturer of goods. On the other hand, or when the export activity is directly carried out by the man- or sorry, on the other hand, we have indirect exporting, in which or it happens kapag a manufacturer hires the services of an export intermediary agency to export his. To give an example, in this market and strategy, year 2022, Forbes Global 2000 named various Filipino corporations that are recognized as major export companies. So, kasama dito ay industrial conglomerates such as Aboitis, Alliance Global, Ayala, and San Miguel. Kasama din ang PLDT which offers telecommunication services po. Advantages of exporting are it stimulates economic growth since it drives GDP and other economic metrics. Uh, export builds foreign relationships and eventually it opens opportunities then on possible partnerships. It expands the consumer base at ayun nga, it goes beyond the local market kasi. It also reduces production costs compared to kum- magmanufacture yung product compared to magmanufacture ng product on its own. And also, it mitigates the risk of build growth. <laughs> However, meron din naman siya mga disadvantages. Such as, adapting to foreign markets in which may not be supported by the local consumers. It can also be subject to political climate since meron nga mga government policies, regulations, and geop- geopolitical factors to involve. Supply chain issues, one thing then. And the currency fluctuations, which is an uncontrollable factor across all businesses. Second on our global market entry strategy, we have licensing and franchising. Let's talk first about licensing, which is defined as a business arrangement wherein a company authorizes another company by issuing a license to temporarily access its intellectual property rights, such as manufacturing processes, branding, copyright, trademark, patent, technology, trade secrets, and other and others for adequate consideration and of course for specified condition. As an example, let's have Walt Disney and NBA. For other brands, in order for them to use Disney characters, kunwari sa mga pinoproduce nilang items like t-shirts, mugs, or before pa man makapagproduce yung other businesses than trading cards ng mga NBA players, or yung mga sports brands ng NBA apparel, they need to have license with the said companies. Advantages of licensing are it is cost-effective kung ikukumpara sa pag-set up ng very own renowned brand from scratch. With this, of course, it also allows access to brand recognition and rep- reputation. It offers easy access then to exports, to experts and technological innovations. And these big companies allows sharing of resources. So that is one of the advantages. 
As for the disadvantages, it can significantly limit product development. Gawa nga po ng guidelines na kailangan i-observe along with the licensing agreement. It restricts access to other technology and it can be expensive for some industries. So aside from licensing, we also have franchising which is a great way to introduce a new product or service to the current market. It is a type of business that grants a franchisee an access to franchise or proprietary business knowledge, processes, and trademarks, thus allowing the franchisee to sell a product or service under the franchise or business name. <clears throat> Good example here, which is a common example, um, the foreign fast food chains such as McDonald's, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. Like licensing, it has also its own advantages such as the franchisee can benefit from the franchisor's expertise and business knowledge. Franchise can also offer access to the economies of scale like marketing and bulk purchasing. And it paves an easy an easy way of arrival to the market because uh, you are not carrying a very renowned brand. As to the disadvantages, of course, it has a very high startup cost. Because aside from the franchise source basic proprietary business knowledge, kailangan may fund then for other investments and resources such as good location, good website, or team. It can also restrict control and freedom over the franchise business kasi katulad ng license, may mga guidelines na kailangan i-comply. There's also a possibility of a business failure and sa bawat kinita nga ng franchise business, merong share doon si franchisor. Now let's move on with joint ventures and strategic alliances. When we say joint venture, it refers to a business arrangement that involves two or more parties that collaborate to carry out a specific project or task. Yung joint venture, ang treatment natin dito ay isang separate legal entity from the collaborators. And when the parties entered into a joint venture, they usually sign a joint venture agreement. One example is yung joint venture between the car manufacturer, BMW, and the Chinese automobile manufacturer, uh, Brilliance Auto Group, noong 2003. So this joint venture named BMW Brilliance ay binuo to produce, uh, to produce at para na rin venta ng BMW cars sa China. Advantages of joint venture is that it provides businesses with growth opportunities dahil sa mga combined efforts and resources. Also, it is available to businesses of all sizes. It provides businesses with a chance to work together and pool resources and the expertise then among collaborators and allow businesses to save money due to the increased resources. As to the disadvantages, since, since iba't ibang management or individual ang nagko-collaborate, there may be differences in the management styles or even sa culture. Then, in order for a joint venture to succeed, due diligence must be performed beforehand. So, this includes feasibility studies, analysis, and research. Lastly, there could be an equal distribution that we, there are an equal contribution that uh, eventually could lead to conflict between the parties involved to answer joint venture. Now, on the other hand, we have a strategic alliance which is a collaborative agreement between two or more companies that wish to pursue mutually beneficial goals, but in which there is no creation of a separate legal entity like kung ano man yun ngay as a joint venture. <clears throat> to give an example, Barnes & Noble emerged as one of the biggest players in the bookstore market nationwide. At the same time, Starbucks exploded in popularity as this European coffee house culture mainstream in the United States. So, ano nga ba yung best combination? Gundi coffee with well di ba? So, in 1993, both chains began a strategic alliance. Of 
Support in the global market entry strategy is direct investment, which may be defined as investments in company with the aim of financing their development. In return, whatever man yung financial performance the company may share dun si investor. For our country, last 2023, based on the depart based on the report of the Department of Finance, Singapore is the Philippines' top source of foreign direct investment inflows, with investments in key sectors including renewable energy, infrastructure, healthcare, manufacturing, and IT. Advantages of direct investment are it opens opportunity for, econo for economic growth and human capital development. It can also relate to export, which there might be an increase in export. And it also creates competitive market since it is related to increasing resources, increasing budget, and investing to research that helps improve companies. For disadvantages, foreign investors might encounter hindrance of domestic investment because of certain government rules that must adhere to. There is also a risk from political changes which is also a disadvantage of exportation. And also, we have the free exchange rates. Other global market strategies are acquisition and mergers, or joining of two or more business entities that entails a restructuring of their corporate order. They are aimed at achieving better synergies within the organization in order to increase their competence and efficiency. For the, for the advantages, it offers opportunity to acquire talent and intellectual property since we are now referring to two, diff two or more different business joining as one. Um, it offers a new business model and it saves time from the learning curves so pag develop na rin new products and processes. As to the disadvantages, there might be a cultural clash between the joining parties, loss of differentiation, marketplace confusion as well, and as well as loss of local brand strength. Next global market entry strategy, we have contract, manufacturing, and outsourcing, which happens when one company enters into an agreement with another to produce components or products or to offer services over a specific time frame. As with the advantages, it low it offers lower overhead and maximized profit and avail top of the line technical expertise. However, for the disadvantages, um of course there are questions regarding the partner reliability or kung um na deliver ba ni kinukuha natin contract contract or yung mga outsource natin companies yung um service na inabil natin sa kanila and it might entail then higher long term costs or a concept that yung fund na pinagbabayad natin sa contractors or outsourced companies ay baka mas makatipid kung gagamitin natin siya pang invest ng knowledge or resources to produce own products on the seventh we have turnkey projects which is also known as design build or design and build projects so this refers to a method of delivering a, a completed facility, product, or service to a client. It is somehow similar to contracted manufacturing and outsourcing, but in turn, key outputs are mostly defined into projects. Turnkey projects offers various advantages, such as being a one-stop shop, or what they mainly offer is the convenience of clients, that instead of coordinating with multiple parties and managing multiple contracts, Yung mga clients can work with a single company to get their product or project done from start to finish. It also reduces costs compared to traditional project delivery methods. It reduces time and it offers an opportunity for a single point of responsibility since the isang alang ng yung kausap dito sa two projects. Like any other strategies, it has also its very own disadvantages, such as in limited control about the project, reduced flexibility, or kapag ka hindi, or hindi ka agad pwede ma effect yung changes na gusto ng client once na starting yung project. And next is the dependence on the turnkey company to deliver a high-quality product. Siyempre, kapag ka yung turnkey company fails to deliver, 
client may discover that is some more product or worst case scenario, baka mag-start ulit yung project from scratch with a new company. Last is the global market entry strategy. So we have so we have here is the management contracts, which is a type of contractual agreement made between two or more parties in which the management of a, project, of a project or business is outsourced to a third party contractor known as the manager. This agreement stipulates that the manager is responsible for all aspects of the projects of, or business, including operations, finance, and corporate governance, while the owner retains ownership and control of the underlying assets. As to the advantages, it enables a firm to exploit an international business opportunity without having to place a great deal of its own physical assets at risk. For the disadvantages, the men, international management in countries that are undergoing political or social unrest can place a threat for the managers who are operating the projects. And of course, suppliers of expertise may put a threat of new competitor in the local market. Okay, so as we are now aware of the various global market entry strategies, let us now proceed with the cross-cultural marketing challenges. So ito na rin po yung second part ng report. Due to the rise of international marketplaces, again, Many businesses now have multiple locations. The company's ability to transcend to national borders give rise to multi multicultural organization. Um, while it's true that the businesses are finding this expansion to be easy and profitable, syempre, um, managing and overseeing a global corporation is more complicated. It's more complicated when compared to managing it locally. Aside sa geographic difficulties, madami pa factors na hindi consider at challenges that might be encountered by the international businesses. So these challenges might be in the form of, first, we have cultural differences. So culture plays an important role in shaping consumer behavior, communication styles, and decision-making processes. The mga international businesses, before pa man sila pumasok sa foreign market, we should study the culture and kailangan din nila mag-adjust or i-adjust yung strategies nila accordingly. Failure to do so can lead to misunderstanding cultural norms and values, inappropriate messaging, tsaka ineffective advertising campaigns. Next we have is language barriers, which poses a misconception which poses miscommunication risk that can threaten the operation or the business plan of the international businesses. Third, we also have communication style. One aspect of communication style is language usage. Across iba't ibang countries, words and phrases might be interpreted differently. Like a simple yes might range its meaning from okay, I'll consider it, to, yes, definitely. So, isa na rin dito yung importance na binibigay ng other culture or countries sa non-verbal communication. So, kasama dito yung use of facial expression and hand gestures. It also involves seating arrangements and personal distance. Next, we have consumer behavior. Dito, a consumer's level of exposure toward a foreign foods or lifestyle may influence yung kanyang buying decision and preferences. Minsan na, di ba, nakakarinig tayo ng okay lang na mahal kasi important naman yan. O kaya, masarap yung uh, food na yan kasi important yan. Mga ganoon. So with that, yung ibang consumers, nagkakaroon sila ng thinking na magagandang products or services if yung, if yung item or yung foods is produced from another country or from a foreign brand. Next, we have sensitivity and taboo, which entails avoiding of topics that are considered to be disrespectful to talk about without careful consideration. So example dito ay yung pagban ng Vietnam sa, bar sa Barbie movie last year. So the issue was merong scene doon sa movie kung saan pinapakita yung controversial new shape 9 dash line that illustrates yung territorial claim ng China over the South China Sea. 
which um which is offending for the Vietnamese people. And lastly, for the challenges, we have market research or cross-cultural research challenges which might be encountered when cultural differences impact consumers' attitudes, behaviors, and preferences toward research regarding products and services. Now, in order to overcome these challenges, adaptive strategies must be observed. So first here we have cultural sensitivity. So cultural sensitivity or being aware that cultural differences and similarities between people exist without assigning them a value, a value positive, or negative, um, better or worse, right or wrong. Essentially, cultural sensitivity is a set of skills that allows a global businesses to understand people whose cultural background is not the same with the brand's home market. Understanding then how to reach new audiences is the key to scaling business around the globe. In particular, adopting cultural sensitivity in advertising and adapting, mes and adapting messaging plays a big part in meeting local needs and expectations. So let me play this on um, Google's 2021 advertisement as an example. We also know this as from its title, the more we learn, the closer we get. Okay, not really direct to the point, but it is somehow related to cultural sensitivity. Um, the advertisement encourages us to ask tough questions about race, religion, and mental health. Um, this Google's campaign is a perfect example then of showing a stance on cultural issues and offering a more culturally relevant connection with the audience. So it points out that knowing about the things we don't understand can lead to a greater unity. Second on our adaptive strategy is localized content and social media localization. <laughs> Using a localized marketing strategy is also crucial to avoid this targeting. Many brands have experienced a steep and expensive learning curve having or having a regional and social media campaign fail to resonate or worse offend the local audiences. With this, Local localization lets us communicate culturally, revealing new ways to market products and services based on the unique nature of any given local market. For example, we have Netflix. Netflix experience is all about providing users with the content they want. And of course, for the Netflix users here, mapapansin nyo naman na yung mga, mapapansin nyo naman ito sa mga recommended movies nyo and shows pati na rin doon sa mga availability ng mga translated subtitles. In fact, uh, Netflix has become pretty well known for their localization efforts in which they create original content that really reflects the local culture of their market. Third on our adaptive strategy is portable and transportation. Running a multilingual marketing campaign is one of the best ways to break barrier, language barriers. Remember, isa to sa mga challenges natin. And of course, reach a wider audience. For example, to celebrate uh, Black Cat Awareness Month noong October 2022, Sunny Cat, or, which is a company that sells cat products, 
launch a campaign to raise awareness about black cats and change people's perceptions of them from being in bad luck to good luck. So with their social media posts, Sunny Cat encouraged their followers to share their photos and stories of their black cats across their Instagram and Facebook posts. Next is cultural contextualization. To develop a successful marketing strategy, an organization must take into consideration the cultural influences of the society where a new product is being introduced. Consumers make decisions about the consumption of a product based on these cultural influences. Let's use McDonald's May 15, 2020 social media post as an example. So this one is Mactos advertisement in Guatemala, while the other one is their post for USA. Let's take um please note that um itong dalawang to ay pinost na or pinost na uh, same week the same month. Okay, so let's take a closer look on this uh this photo mo na. Macdo offers a meal plan for four people or more with their happy meal, which we know is a young child's product. Pero since may minimum age, diba, minimum age requirements si FB, we can say that this campaign is targeted to the parents of the children. Now, Guatemala is a collective society, which has taken, which uh, McDonald's taken advantage of it, offering a program that is fitting for a family. On the other hand, the US Kingdom McDonald's is promoting a buy one get more day and rewards for downloading their app. As an individual society, the amazement of this promotion plays into their need for individual benefit and reward. Other cross cultural marketing adaptations are we have localized partnerships, which gives an opportunity to expand the reach of audiences that might not already in the front. Um, we might not already be contacted. That was um, biggest benefit of voices were the from out from the owner to the customers. The um, in which they'll share information about the businesses and partners, and of course, vice versa. Next, we also have adapted adapted product positioning. Product positioning is the process of determining new product positions in the minds of consumers. It includes analyzing the market and competitor's position, defining the position of a new product among the existing ones, and communicating a particular product's image. We also have flexible campaigns, which gives a business the opportunity to respond to the changes in the marketplace. Eight adaptive strategy, we have test and iterate or iterate with testing, which refers to the process of making small and gradual changes to the product or business um, based on the world of different insights from testing results then to the overall users or to the overall users of the product based on their feedback. Lastly, we have training and education or educational marketing which is a strategy that focuses on educating the audience about a certain topic relevant to the industry and product rather than directly pushing towards a sale. So by helping prospects realize the value we can potentially get out of the product and also by offering them something in advance, like knowledge, um, we are more likely to convert them into paying customers. So for your different takeaways, um, with this report, there are parties and females in the global market, and each has its own advantages and disadvantages. With this, a thorough study must be undertaken to tailor the marketing strategy to the current circumstances. Next, we also have um, marketing challenges, and business leaders must be aware of them bago pa man sila pumasok sa bago international market. Lastly, we have Various adaptations that can be utilized to navigate the challenges presented in entering a new market. There are already success stories on the implementation of these strategies, and studying what other brands did might help us to thread in the global market. As for the resources, I listed, out, I listed them out here, and 
that's all for my presentation. Thank you. So, we tie sa standardization versus customization. Standardization encompasses the process of formulating and exec ex executing uniform marketing plans, messages, and campaigns across diverse markets, irrespective of cultural or geographical disparities. Customization refers to the process of adapting marketing tactics, messages, and campaigns to align with the distinct cultural, linguistic, and market-specific attributes of individual target market. Advantages of standardization, cost-efficient, brand identity, global brand identity, faster implementation, and economies of scale. The challenges, however, are cultural insensitive, lack of relevance, competitive challenges, and legal and regulatory constraints. Sa customization naman, ang advantage na to ay culturally relevant, market adaptation, increase appeal, reduce cultural barriers. Ang challenges naman ay increase cost kasi nga uh, kailangan diverse yung product, resource intensive, consistency challenges, and potential conflict. As a side note, striking the right balance between standardization and customization is a strategy that can be applied in the interconnected global marketplace and demonstrates adaptability by taking into account both global brand identity and local consumer preferences. This balance tends to yield the highest level of success. Siguro no, pag may isip natin sa makto, uh, ang standardization ni makto, yung sa burger niya. Kunyari lang, uh, ang burger na in-offer niya sa lahat ng mga bansa, kunyari yung Mac burger makto, Yun yun eh, yun na yung standard. Kapag customize naman dito sa Pilipinas, uh, meron nung rice bowl. Uh, sa, kunyari, sa China naman, meron nung uh, China team na burger. Sa Japan, Japan team na burger, so on and so forth. Ganun yung mga customized to their palates na mga taste. Yun. Managing international distribution channels. The management of international distribution channels include the supervision of various procedures, methods, and relationships involved in the transportation of products or services from producers to consumers in worldwide marketplace. The effective and efficient reach of target customer is heavily reliant on distribution channels. However, managing these channels in an international setting presents challenges as a result of the following. Diverse market, legal requirements or compliances, and cultural considerations. So channel ways in managing international distribution channels. Ch number one, channel selection. Determine the most suitable distribution channels based on factors such as market characteristics, customer preferences, product type, and local regulations. Choose between direct and indirect channels, including agents, distributors, wholesalers, retailers, and online platforms. Number two, market research. Conduct. conduct Thorough market research to understand local distribution structures, competitive landscape, consumer behaviors, and preference in preferences in each target market. Number three, logistic and supply chain. Develop efficient logistics and supply systems to ensure timely and cost-effective movement of product across borders. Address challenges related to transportation, customs, duties, tariffs, and documentation. Number four is legal and regulatory compliance. Understand and comply with local regulations, import-export laws, and standards related to product quality, labeling, and safety. Number five, cultural sensitivity. Consider cultural differences and preferences when designing distribution strategies and selecting channel partners. Number six, Number six, channel partnerships. Establish strong relationships with local channel partners, agents, distributors, or retailers who have knowledge of the local market and cost customer base. Provide training, support, and resources to ensure, to ensure consistency and alignment with the brand message. 
Number seven, channel management or implement effective channel management strategies, including pricing, promotion, and inventory management that suit each market's dynamics. Number eight, technology and e-commerce. Leverage technology to manage orders, inventory, and communication with channel partner, especially in e-commerce and online platforms. Number nine, communication and coordination. Maintain clear communication and coordination with all channel partners to ensure consistent messaging and a seamless customer experience. Number 10 is performance evaluation or monitor the performance of distribution channels using KPIs such as sales, market share, customer satisfaction, and distribution efficiency. Channel conflict resolution, number 11, address conflicts that may arise between different channel partners to maintain harmonious relationships and prevent disruption. Number 12, scalability and adaptation, Distribu uh, design distribution strategies that are scalable and adaptable adaptable to chat to changing market conditions and expansion into new markets number 13 risk management identify potential risks such as political instability economic fluctuations and regulatory changes and have consistent contingency plans in place number 14 data analytics utilize data analytics to gain insights into market trends consumer behaviors and channel performance enabling informed decision making number 15 continuous improvement regularly review and optimize distribution strategies to ensure they remain aligned with company objectives and dynamics uh, that's all for my topic thank you for listening and have a great day So, again, in uh, the in the international. In global marketing are interconnected yet separate ideas that encompass marketing strategies and actions conducted on a worldwide level. No? Although there are similarities between them, such as the ability to target consumer outside the uh, outside of their own countries, each strategy has its own distinct characteristics and difficulties. International marketing is a cost is the customization of marketing methods to cater to the distinct requirements and preferences of consumers in other countries or areas. This method no, acknowledges the cultural, economic, and social disparities among nations and customizes marketing strategies appropriately. So companies that <clears throat> participate in uh, international marketing frequently adapt their product offers, pricing tactics, no, and promotional messaging to align with the distinctive attributes of each region. So global marketing, in contrast, adopts a standardized strategy, prioritizing consistency in product offers, as what our presenter mentioned, and marketing techniques across numerous nations. These techniques presuppose uh, that there exist sufficient similarities across consumers, worldwide to warrant the use of a standardized approach. Global marketing uh, frequently entails the utilization of economies of scale, whereby corporations harness no, their resources and optimize their operations to attain efficiency in production and marketing on a global level. No? Now, <clears throat> cultural sensitivity is an essential factor no, to take into account in the field of international marketing because gaining insight into cultural sub subtleties is essential for customizing products and marketing communications to effectively connect with consumers in specific regions. Let's say, for example, in Bicol, no, most commonly, medyo uh, manghang. No? So let's say Mang Inasal. No? Mang Inasal, maybe it's just more uh, ma maraming sili rather than in Manila. No? So cultural elements such as language, no? customs, traditions, and beliefs have a profound impact on customer behavior. So skilled international marketers understand and effectively negotiate these complex cultural uh, factors. <clears throat> on the other hand, global marketing is too 
uncover common consumer habits and preferences that can be targeted with uniform products and communication. The uh, strat these strategies or this, this strategy frequently depends on worldwide branding and positioning with the goal of establishing a uniform brand identity that surpasses cultural distinction. And to do this, one must possess a profound comprehension of worldwide patterns and consumer actions that can be implemented in many markets. Adaptation and standardization are crucial to strategic choices in the realm of foreign and global marketing. Companies must determine the extent to which they should customize their products, services, and marketing messages to suit specific local markets. So, International marketing permits substantial personalization, whereas global marketing emphasizes consistency and efficiency by employing standardized methods. Market research is crucial in both international and global marketing. Gaining insights into the economic situations, regulatory settings, and competitive landscapes of each target market provides valuable information for making a strategic decision. Localized research in international marketing offers valuable insights into country-specific consumer behaviors and preferences. Global marketing research aims to find shared characteristics and patterns that can be utilized in multiple markets. So, communication tactics vary between international and global marketing. Companies frequently employ local firms in international marketing to develop marketing programs that are customized to the linguistic and cultural nuances of each target region. So a centralized strategy is typically more prevalent in global marketing where a single worldwide campaign is utilized and may be adjusted to accommodate various languages and cultural subtle subtleties or subtle subtleties as necessary international and global marketing strategies provide distinct methods for targeting consumers in different countries a successful marketers comprehend the distinct problems and prospects offered by numerous markets and utilize them to establish a global brand presence regardless of whether they prioritize adoption or standardization. And take note, to efficiently traverse the complexity of the global economy, it is crucial to strike a precise equilibrium between customization and consistency. So I think that's it for this topic. So may I request somebody to